everybody, Bill Sky, the Rust Guy, back again. This time, we're going to talk about installing Rust on a Windows system and that doesn't want Visual Studio. Now, I wasn't sure if I was going to do this, but I had enough people ask me, well, do I have to install Visual Studio? Not Visual Studio Code, but do I have to install Visual Studio? It's big, it's bulky, I just don't like it. Well, I kind of agree with you. I don't like using Visual Studio unless I'm doing a primarily just a Windows application. So there is a way to do it, and that's what we're going to do today. It's very, very small. It takes a little bit, of, a little bit of time, no longer by far than Visual Studio does installing that. So let's just get right to it. Visuals without Visual Studio, Rust. Okay, so I've got my Windows 11. Now, this is a brand new install. There's really nothing on it except the Brave browser. And I'm going to bring up the Brave browser. And you want to look for MSYS2. So I'm going to do a search, a Google search for MSYS2, or maybe this will be a Brave search. It is. And it's MSYS2.org. You want to go to there, and you want to download this installer. Just go ahead and download that. Now, I'm going to put this website, and I'm also going to put all of the commands that I'm going to be using to do this installation. And I'm not going to do all of the installation commands in real time in this video. I'm going to speed it up quite a bit uh, just because I don't think you want to see a status bar going. So once you download that, go ahead and close your Brave browser. Bring up your Explorer. Go to wherever you downloaded it and probably your downloads folder and just execute this program. And Every, just take every default. Don't, don't do anything special unless you really know what you're doing. But, and, and a lot of you probably do, but some of you probably don't. I just like to take the defaults. That way it's not a surprise. And I'm just going to go ahead and start the installation. Now the install doesn't take very long. The initial tool install doesn't take very long. But then you want to issue some commands. Now what is MSYS2? Well, MSYS2 is a Linux-like environment on your Windows that will install development tools as well as other things on your system without you having to use Windows Update or downloading stuff. It's got its own package manager called Pac-Man, which is a, a Linux package manager. But it really makes things easier for those of you that don't want to mess around with the man when it comes to Microsoft and Visual Studio. So just go ahead and let that finish. And then once that finishes, you're going to want to execute some commands and like I said, I will put those commands in the description of this video so you can just go ahead and do it yourself. Okay, once it's finished installing, go ahead and just leave that checked, run MSYS2, or you can uncheck that and say finish. And then go down here to the search bar and just type MSYS. And you want to install the MSYS2 MSYS. You don't, want to, you don't want to open up these MinGWs or anything like that. So go ahead and open up the MSYS2 MSYS. And what we're going to do is we're going to issue some commands here. Now I don't know what the font really looks like for you on this video, but like I said, I'll go ahead and put the commands in the description of this video. So the first thing you want to do is you want to type Batman SYU dash capital SYU. And what this is going to do is it's going to update the MSYS installer, it's going to update whatever MSYS installed. It's not really that big. I think what it's going to do is it's going to, it's going to first of all, update the installer, the most recent installer, and then you're going to have to issue this command again once the new installer is installed, and it'll tell you whether or not there's anything to update. I always like to do it at least twice just to see what it's going to do. By do, I mean what it's going to update. Okay, so it says to complete it, you have to end it. So you have to come down here and type MSYS again, uh, MSYS2, MSYS, and I'll go ahead and issue that once again. Okay, so it says it needs to download and install about 47 megabytes of, of stuff, not that big of a deal, now that we've got the MSYS2 installer uh, done. Now, once you do that, you have to start typing in those commands to install everything else and like I said I'm not going to take I'm not going to show you every little second uh, that it takes to do that I'll speed up the video but then you can go ahead and do these yourself so go ahead and let this initial upgrade start and then uh, go ahead and install the other ones now when you do install the other ones before I get started on this speeded up version of this of this update 
just take all defaults. There's no, there's nothing you have to do to make anything, you know, do anything customized. Just take all the defaults. So let's get going and entering in these commands. Okay, so now once you get all of that done, uh, you need to test. I always like to do this. I'm going to go down here to the search and I'm going to type msys. And I'm going to show you a different way of doing this where you don't have to use msys. You can just use the Windows terminal. Uh, but in this case, I'm going to go to msys. I'm going to click on msys to mingw64 because pretty much everything we did was the mingw toolchain. So I'm just going to type gcc and there it says. So gcc exe says that there's no input files. A GPP so it, it it installed it correctly so I'm going to exit out of that and so we verified that the development tools were installed now the last the last thing you want to do is now install rust so I'm going to say pacman s min gw w64 x86 64 rust now you don't have to download anything from the Rust website. You don't have to build anything. This will do the entire installation for you. So just go ahead and install this. Now this is gonna install like 454 megabytes of stuff. Go ahead and let it go. Let it finish installing. And then we're gonna move on and I'm gonna show you actually how to get it working on Windows without you having to use the MSYS infrastructure if that's what you don't wanna do. Okay, the installation of Rust is now over. Now, I don't want to run it from the msys2 msys window. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to, and I'm going to type msys2, and I'm going to go to the mingw64, and we're going to just type the word cargo. And you should get a whole bunch of information about the cargo command. Now, cargo is the package manager for Rust. It's a very useful tool. I actually, the more I use it, the more I like it. And... So once that's done, then you're all set. Rust is, is installed. Now if you want, you can actually use this msys2 environment. Um, you can go to the home folder, you can execute stuff. Most people on Windows don't like to use this. They, they'll use it for installing the tools and I completely understand that. Uh, so you, you, if, if you don't wanna do that, that's fine. You can go to home. You can look at see there's when there's my windows user that's my user id i can change the directory to windows user and there's really nothing in there um i could do an al so you have to know a little bit about about linux to be able to do this but if you don't want to mess with linux at all that's fine so just exit out of these and i'm going to show you how to now set up the windows path now if i go into search and i type terminal and I type cargo, it's not gonna know what I'm talking about. It's gonna get, I'm gonna get some red error messages in the PowerShell. It's gonna tell me it doesn't know what it's, what I'm talking about. Well, what, so what did I just do? What did I do, what was all that installation for? Well, the problem is, is that the operating system doesn't know to look in the msys2 subdirectory. And if we go to the, your, your explorer on Windows, I go to this PC, and the local C disk, it doesn't know that your executable programs are in msys64. That's where your executable programs are. And you have to update the path for the operating system to say, hey, I installed some new applications, go in there. And this is for any application that you install on Windows. You have to set up that path. Linux, yes, even Mac, you have to do that. So, well, not so much the Mac, but you do have to do it on Linux and you have to do it on Windows. So you have to do this just one time. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring up my Explorer one more time. And this time I'm gonna right click on this PC and click Properties. And then I'm gonna to go to Advanced System Settings. I'm gonna to go to Environment Variables. And I could do this either from a user point of view or from a system point of view. So if you have a Windows that a lot of people are using, a Windows computer a lot of people are using, you might wanna do it from system the system variable view. 
but I'm just going to do it from the user variable view because nobody else uses this computer and I'm just going to double click on path I'm going to click on new and then browse now I could maybe just click on browse I don't know but and I'm going to go to this PC I'm going to go to local C disk and there's my MSIS 64 I'm going to expand that and the first one I'm going to do is I'm just going to go, going to go down to USR and click bin and click OK. Then I'm going to click new again, browse. I'm going to go down to my this PC, local C, MSYS64. Now this time I'm going to go into the MinGW64 and I'm going to click on bin. Just click on it once, click OK, click OK click OK and then click OK once again and then you can close the system about window now what did I just do I just told the operating system to look in those binary those bin folders those bin directories for executables and I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna type terminal and I'm gonna type cargo boom it now knows where the cargo program is um, I'm gonna try type vim Vim is the editor that I like to use. So Vim is there. I'm going to type nano. Nano's there, so I can use that as well. Uh, one thing I haven't done is I haven't seen my favorite editor is Genie. And I'm going to go into MSYS. And I don't know if this is going to work. I've never tried this. I meant to do this before I did this video. So let's say Pac-Man dash as Genie. Let's see if Genie has been implemented in the MSYS and yeah you, you you can't it's not there so unfortunately Genie's not there now you can use this with your Visual Studio Code so if you watch my previous video on setting up Visual Studio Code Visual Studio Code will also use the this installation of of uh, cargo and Rex now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into documents and I'm just gonna do every all everything from the command line um, I don't think I really have any folders in there because it's a brand new window. So I'm going to make directory Rust. Whoops, what just happened? Oh, I split the window. So I'm going to make directory Rust projects, change directory Rust projects, and I'm going to say cargo new hello world. And that's what cargo does is that it actually creates a directory and puts all the files that you need in there. I'm going to change directory hello world. Okay, and I'm just going to say cargo build. And it built it, and I'm going to say cargo run. And there it said hello world. Let me exit out of this one. Okay. Now if I want to edit that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say nano src, that's where my source code is. And I believe it's main.rs and there is my program. So I could split the PowerShell and I could have Nano running in one and then the build in another one. Okay, and let's go ahead and say print LN, program ending, have a nice day. This is just to show you that it, it, it really is installed. I'm gonna exit out of nano and then I'm gonna go ahead and, and build it again I'm gonna run it again and now it says program ending have a nice day so that's how you can set up rust and cargo without using Visual Studio if you install Visual Studio code you can use these executables no problem but you have to make sure you change the path so your Visual Studio free if you don't want to install that behemoth of a tool hope to see it our next video